So today we're going to talk a little bit about the two cornerstones of yoga, yeah, abhyasha and varagya, which kind of translate like traditionally they translate into um, practice and non-attachment. Okay, so we're going to loop back around it. So it's sutras 12 to 16, it's about mastering your thoughts. When we look at the whole definition of yoga, it says like yoga means being in the now, right? And this place where we recognize ourselves as pure awareness. So what stops us? What gets in the way? Well, they call it vrittis and vrittis are mental activity. Right? So we have this mental activity, this constant thinking, this constant busyness that gets in the way of recognizing who we truly are. And the whole yoga, like if you look at the Yoga Sutras, the whole thing, the whole premise is around samadhi. And the first book is, you know, what samadhi is about, right? This unification process. The second book is the practices to get you to samadhi. The third one is what life looks like if we're, we're living like that, and then ultimately fourth book is about freedom. So these thoughts, it says to be able to master the thoughts, we use these two cornerstones, Abhyesha and Varagya. So Abhyesha, we like to say, like, never give up. Right? Never give up, and Varagya, this non-attachment, keep letting go. So never give up, do the practices they're going to take you to a higher frequency. They're going to take you to a higher consciousness. They're going to help you be a better human, to remove the obstacles, to remove the interference, to get everything out of the way so that you can recognize this field of pure awareness underneath, this consciousness that sits underneath, a greater intelligence that we actually have access to. And what gets in the way is all these beliefs that get programmed into us. So we have this we have this incredible tool, the mind. But it's very easy to hijack the mind. It's very easy to influence what the mind's paying attention to. And if we don't have a tool, if we don't have a system to master the mind, it's very easy to get controlled through that tool in conjunction with the senses. It's easy for our environment to shape how, what we believe and how we operate in the world. And let's face it, maybe our environment does not necessarily have our best interests in heart. So yoga or a system like yoga, this whole system of Ashtanga yoga, right, progressively moving inwards and using discernment, using discrimination to set aside what I am not, to put aside all the things that I once believed to be true about me, but maybe are not. We've all had that process, right, that we used to believe something and now we, it's like t we, t we believed it with our whole heart and mind, but now it has no influence on us. That's the process. We're doing that progressively from a gross to a subtle level over and over and over again. And that's what a yoga life coach does. We're learning to use the whole system as a transformation system, not just a physical system. And this process of the right practices in the right order for the right person allows us to then <clears throat> um, do this practice of non-attachment, like the keep letting go. Because what we're trying to do as human beings is this simple process of unlearning right, what doesn't serve us, which doesn't bring us to you know, a higher understanding, which doesn't help us evolve, and then learn new ways that take us into those places. And that process of, of unlearning and relearning is getting faster and faster. And because it's getting faster and faster, many people are struggling. Right? They're, it's really difficult because what we once believed to be true, maybe is not anymore, right? Maybe, right, maybe our health and pharmaceutical uh, industries don't have our health uh, at their center. 
maybe our education systems don't have thriving and doing well in the world as the best interest for our children. Maybe yoga in its current form is not about your transformation of spirituality, it's about your physicality. Maybe religion is not about you being more spiritual, it's about being in control. Maybe our governments are not about serving you, about serving their best interests. <laughs> and these are just maybes, right, just throwing it out there. But we used to believe in that the last 100 years, we would believe in that and believe in authority and believe that they had our best interests at heart. Maybe that's not true anymore. And maybe that's happening faster and faster. So one of the main important things with yoga is coming back into self-governance, coming back into our own truth, into our own knowing. And we like to use that term, you know, self-governance, like self-rule, understanding through direct knowing, through direct perception, by getting our beliefs out of the way, to having mastery of the mind, to settling the vrittis so that we, what it does is it comes through to you as insight and inspiration. It's what we traditionally talk about, like waking up. Oh my God, I, I woke up. And a lot of the planet is waking up. There's some, there's some slow bees, behind, you know, going a little bit slow, but we're doing it. And as a mass, we're going to hit a critical point. And then the road's going to get very bumpy. It's going to be like a rodeo ride. But the more that you have these um, practices in place, these tools that were generously gave, given to us by the rishis, gurus, sages, you know, who got to that level of 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 yoking, of of yoga, unifying, they gave it back and mapped it out to us. And if you can take the guides like the Yoga Sutras and you can map it out in a contemporary way. Right? It's really the ultimate life coaching system, and that's what we're all about. Yes. So you can look at also yoga. Okay, once it's once yoga's at half time at the Super Bowl, you know it's been hijacked by commercial interests, right? And they they just want it to be f about physicality because it takes all the power out of it. Because the power is about spirituality. It's about waking up. And maybe the belief is they don't, they don't necessarily want us to wake up. Maybe right. Just throwing it out there again. But the waking up is about empowering the collective, right? And we're all about the collective. How do we, as a unified group, start to direct life the way that we want it? Right? The way that we see serves the whole rather than, you know, individuals or separate things. So, again, it's but we have to master our... Our thoughts, we have to master our minds. And yoga is a process in. Make your outside work for you. Right? That's yama, right? Your life and how you live it day to day, niyama. Then we get our body right, we optimize it, asana. Then we get our nervous system and breathing and our life force balanced and we build it, pranayama. Then we withdraw the senses from all these things we're told are going to make us happy. Right? They, they don't make us happy. It's just dopamine. Right? We get all these hits to give us a little dopamine hit. And dopamine is about pleasure. But that's not what the yogis talked about because pleasure is just something that we keep chasing after, whatever it is. What the yogis were talking about was developing inner peace. That's the goal. That's what we're after. And that goes by going even further. Then we want to learn to concentrate the mind, bring it into a single point. But we have to do that with effort to start with. It's, it's, it's concentration with effort. Then dhyana is effortless concentration, where we become focused on the one object. Right? The mind, and then the riches begin to still. Right? And then samadhi. We start to go beyond the mind. And that is the gift. That is the goal. That is the power going beyond the mind because we tap into that greater intelligence and then you cannot be influenced by anything else. If the world is changing, if the world is getting a little corrupted, if the organizations, the things around us are a little bit corrupted, then we can see beyond that. And also the world is always changing, right? it always has, it's just that it's sped up a lot and the things we believed are coming into, like you're getting, you know, bang, 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 thrown at us really quickly. But what yoga says is once you go beyond the mind, it doesn't matter. 
right? Because whatever happens, you'll stay peaceful, whether it's pleasurable or painful, right? Perceived, we maintain inner peace and we are guided by this intelligence. And a lot of people are looking for predictability. They're looking for how, how do I live my life? What do I do? Right? Can you look after me? Can you do this? And that's a way to live. And it's cool if that's your choice. But if you, if you want to live beyond that, that's like, you know, life is a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. That's what yogis are after. And whatever it is, we're like, we're excited about it because it's life meeting life. It's just unfolding in the moment and you embrace it. But otherwise, we can struggle quite a lot. So like this little, this little thing of, you know, sutras 12 to 16 is really an expanded version because we're trying to make it a living form. We're trying to make it a yoga as a transformation system, as a coaching system to understand what we're trying to do and help people wake up, help people raise their consciousness, help people live the best version of themselves, help people be in service to others to do the same process. That's what we want to do as yoga teachers. So that's, uh, that's where I want to finish today. Just food for thought, Abhyesha and Varagya, Sutras 1, 12 to 16. How do I master my thoughts? So the goal of yoga is to master your thoughts. How do I master them? Never give up and keep letting go. Right. Namaste.